to a lot of people a duck is just a duck but in fact there are lots of species here in the UK. In this video I'm going to show you how to identify the most common duck species you are likely to see. And where better to start than with the most common duck in the world, one that you are probably familiar with, the mallard. In the wild form of this species, males have deep green heads, white collars, brown chests and mostly grey sides and backs. They have a blue patch on each wing which is known as a speculum and several feathers on their rump that curl upwards. Females are much less colourful, being mottled brown over most of their bodies and lacking the varied markings of the males, except for the blue speculums. Now that might seem quite straightforward, but it isn't so simple. Mallards have been domesticated for around 4,000 years and captive birds can be found in a wide range of colours and sizes. Some of these have escaped and many wild birds now show some domestic traits, varying in colour from fully white to fully black and anything in between. To add to the confusion, mallards, like most types of duck, molt their feathers throughout the year, meaning there are periods of time where males are less colourful and look similar to females. From a distance, female shovelers look very similar to female mallards, but once you get a good view of their bill, there is no confusing the two. This is where the species gets its name, with the large bill being lined with small teeth-like projections which are known as lamellae and help them to sieve their food from the water. Male shovelers are brightly coloured throughout most of the year, with dark green heads, white chests and deep brown undersides. They are slightly smaller than a typical mallard and sometimes feed communally where they can end up spinning in large circles as they follow each other hoping for disturbed morsels. Although more than a thousand pairs breed in the UK, these numbers are bolstered in the winter when around 20,000 travel here from Northern Europe and Russia to spend the colder months. Another duck whose numbers swell in the winter is the widgeon. These birds only breed in upland parts of the country, with about 200 pairs doing so, but in the winter as many as 450,000 arrive on our shores. Male widgeon in their breeding plumage have chestnut heads with golden caps, pink breasts and grey backs and sides. Females are harder to identify and are mostly mottled brown, although they have white undersides and may have faded pink along their sides. In the winter, when they are widespread over the UK's wetland areas, widgeon form large flocks, often emerging from the shallows to feed on grass and other waterside vegetation. One type of duck that you are very unlikely to see out of the water is the tufted duck. Unlike the previous three species, which are known as dabbling ducks, the tufted duck is what's known as a diving duck. They spend almost all of their time on the water and dive as deep as 14 metres beneath the surface in search of food. Male tufted ducks are black over most of their bodies, except for a white patch on both sides. And, as their name suggests, they have a tuft of feathers at the back of their heads. Females are dark brown, they lack the white patches and only have a short, very easily missed tuft. There are other diving ducks in the UK, with another type being the potchard. Males of this species have bright reddy brown heads, black chests and light grey wings. You've probably guessed by now that the females are more plainly coloured, being chocolate brown mottled with grey on their backs and they also have lighter cheeks. Only around 720 pairs of potchard breed in the UK but they do become more numerous in the colder months when almost 60,000 of them overwinter here. Unlike a lot of other duck species, in the common shell duck, both the males and females are quite colourful. They have dark green heads, white chests, a hazel stripe down their sides and white and dark green wings. Although their colours are similar, males and females can be separated as the males are larger, and whilst both sexes have red bills, in the males 
it is usually brighter and has a more pronounced bump at its base. One thing that I find particularly interesting about common shell ducks is that their preferred nesting site is down old rabbit burrows. You might be surprised to see this bird in a video about ducks, but I have included it deliberately as despite their name, Egyptian geese are not true geese and belong to the shell duck family. They are light grey over their undersides and most of their head and neck, but they have a distinct brown eye spot and chestnut wings. They also have a white patch on each of their wings, but this is often hidden and mainly visible during flight. One part of their name that is true is that Egyptian geese are not native to the UK and were first introduced here in the 17th century from their native range along the River Nile. One species of duck that is native but will not usually be found along rivers is the Ida. These are a sea duck and hold a couple of accolades. They are not only the fastest flying species but also the heaviest species of duck in the UK, sometimes weighing as much as 2.8 kilograms. Whilst female Idas are mottled brown, males have very striking breeding plumage, a contrasting black head and wings with a white body. Both sexes have very powerful beaks and they use these in their coastal hunts for food, which can include crabs and mussels. As I've shown you the UK's heaviest duck, I should probably also show you the lightest and smallest. The common teal is the world's smallest dabbling duck, growing to only 330 grams and to a wingspan of just 59 centimeters. Around 4,200 teal nest in the UK, but their numbers swell in the winter when more than 200,000 visit our shores. Despite their size, Males are beautifully marked with mottled grey feathers over their undersides, striped grey wings, chestnut coloured heads and a bright teal coloured patch around each eye. All of these markings are missing in female birds which are mottled brown, although both sexes do have a green speculum on each wing. The gadwall doesn't hold any records. It is neither really small nor really big, but in my opinion the males of this species are one of the most overlooked common ducks. From a distance, they can appear plain grey, but from a closer look their feathers are covered in a brilliant grey marbling. Females are brown, but both sexes have a noticeable black rump and a white patch on either wing. Gabwalls are well spread across the northern hemisphere, being found on four different continents. North America, Africa, Asia, and of course Europe. Hopefully, at this point you'll have a general idea of how to identify most of the common duck species of the UK, but there is one more that I would like to include, as I may have misidentified it myself in a recent video. This is a male gargany, which is quite easily identified from its brown head, white eye stripe and grey sides, but when it comes to females, things get a bit trickier. Gargany are only slightly larger than teal, and females of both species look very similar to one another. Teal are most numerous in the winter time, whilst Gargany are a summer visitor, but the two females can also be separated by the lack of a colourful speculum in the Gargany. Female Garganys also always have a light patch at the bottom of their bills, and in most of them they'll have a lighter, almost cream eye stripe. In the UK, there are 22 recognised species of duck, but those that I've included here are the ones you're most likely to see. If you've enjoyed this and would like me to cover the other rarer species, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. And that's all for today, but if you did enjoy this video then you'll almost definitely like this one on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.